you've got your nine millimeter, 38 specials, magnums, slugs, birdshot, buckshot. It's enough to leave your head spinning, especially when you're just starting out as a shooter. It seems like there's a different round of ammo for every day of the year. But there are some easy ways to help you wrap your head around the most common ammo rounds. We'll take a look at the science and the practical application of these rounds to help you choose the best one that fits your needs. Let's jump right in. I'm Natalie Foster, and this is Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. For the rundown on all things ammo, we took a trip to the Cornhusker State. Nebraska's got big skies, beautiful fields, and one of the most well-known ammo manufacturers in the business. The great team at Hornady walked me through it all. Check it out. So we made it down here to the R&D lab at Hornady, and I'm speaking with Jaden Quinlan, who's a ballistics engineer here. So what we're gonna be talking about is handgun ammo. And this can be really kind of intimidating, and it, it kind of makes people afraid a little bit. So what I'd like to do is take some of the fear out of it and demystify what's going on. So Jaden, let's start at the beginning. What is in there? Uh, you kind of have two different things going on. First thing would be, uh, your caliber, you're gonna have different ones of those, 22s all the way on up. And then you're also gonna have different applications, uh, a rim fire and a center fire, so we can talk about that a little bit. But within this, inside of the brass cartridge case, it's, it's hollowed out, mm -hmm. which leaves space for powder. And then in the base of the case, you have your primer pocket, which holds the primer. Mm -hmm. So inside of there, you have your smokeless gunpowder. The primer goes in that hole in the back of the case. When that's sitting in the chamber of the gun and you squeeze the trigger, the firing pin comes forward and it hits the center of the primer. And that causes a small explosion, essentially sends sparks uh, through a small hole in the case and into the powder. It starts the powder burning and it builds up pressure and that's what pushes the bullet out the end of the barrel. Tell me about the common calibers that you'll see that most new shooters out there would see, you know, when they're either at the range or in a gun store. Well, typically when people start out, they start out with a rim fire, such as a 22. And here we have a 22 Magnum. The difference between a rim fire and a center fire, we discussed the nine millimeter before, which was a center fire cartridge. This is a rim fire cartridge where you can see the rim sticks out further. It doesn't have a primer in the center of the case like the center fire does. The priming compound is actually spun into the outside of the rim. So when the firing pin hits this cartridge to ignite it, it doesn't hit the center, it hits on the edge of the rim, which gets pinched between the firing pin and the chamber, and that's what ignites the powder. Okay, so once you kind of move past the rim fires, which are usually a 22 long rifle or a 22 Magnum, uh, you get into the center fire cartridges, which usually start out with a 380. 380 is a very small cartridge in comparison to some of the others. It has less recoil, it's more shootable. And then you move up to the nine millimeter and the 40 and the 45. Those would all be fired out of a semi-automatic handgun. Uh, and then you have revolver cartridges as well, which would be the 38 Special here and the 357 Magnum. Those are the most common, the 38 Special being slightly more shootable than the 357 Magnum, less recoil and a little bit less velocity. But that kind of encompasses the majority of the mainstream handgun cartridges. Right, okay, this is very, very cool. And now I'm gonna go check out something that's a little bit different, in the same vein, but a little different, right? Yes, next I think you're going with uh, Neil Emery to discuss some rifle stuff. So we're inside the factory here at Hornady, and what you're seeing behind us is actual rifle bullets being made, right, Neil? That's correct. Okay, so I have to admit, I am pretty new when it comes to rifle rounds, and I've shot you know, some of the basics, but not much more than that, so I could really use a rundown, actually. Sure. Well, there are some crossover with pistol rounds and rimfire like 22 and 17 that are shot in rifles. A lot of rifle rounds are actually gonna be longer than your handgun rounds. Handguns are limited by the, the length of the cylinder that the cartridge goes in or the magazine if it's magazine fed. Rifles, you have a whole lot more to work with. Common sizes start with like a 223. A right. lot of, you know, your ARs are mostly 223 or a 5.56. 308's another very common round. 3030, you especially see that in a lever action rifle. Okay. Uh, as opposed to something like an AR. These are more for, for lever guns. And then 30 6 is tried and true cartridge for over 100 years now. So very popular. And there's a lot of other good popular ones out there. So those are the common sizes that we're seeing. How would you employ these rounds? Yeah, there's a lot of different uses. Obviously, the 223 and 556 five, in an AR is great for plinking, for competing, right. and even used in hunting, uh, you know, small game, varmint, things like that. Okay. Um, getting up into the 308, the 3030, the 6 uh, a lot more use in pronghorn, deer hunting, black bear, you know, those types of game. Uh -huh. And then even the Ot 6 and larger, where you get into elk and, and some of the other bigger games. So. Gotcha. So some of these are for hunting, but you mm -hmm. can really also target shoot with any of Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Right? 
All right, now I've got a good rundown on what's happening with rifles, and I know you are going to talk to me next about shotgun rounds, shotgun right? Shotgun rounds, All right, exactly. I'm really looking forward to that. Let's head over there. Okay, sounds okay. good. Okay, Neil, so we've talked about handgun ammo, rifle ammo, and now we're here to the final stage with shotguns. So they look a little bit different from the ammo that we've seen previously, and uh, they function a little differently, actually, right? Yeah, just a little bit. They have, you know, f fairly similar components. There's a case, they have a primer, they have powder inside. Beyond that, a typical shot shell is gonna have a whole bunch of lead shot, which is actually little BBs of lead, okay. and it can be different sizes. Uh, and then there's also a plastic wad in there that separates the powder and holds the shot. So when the round ignites and the primer goes off, sets the powder off, it pushes that plastic cup out, holding all that shot, and as the shot leaves the barrel, it starts spreading out to cover your target. Gotcha, it kind of reminds me of like a circus cannon or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Shooting yeah. it out of the barrel and then yeah. it spreads, okay. Exactly, you know, your most common shot shell is a 12 gauge shotgun shell. Okay. Gauge denotes the size, and in this case, 20 gauge is smaller than a 12 gauge. Okay, um, now that's something to really keep in mind because it can be very confusing, right? Yeah. Can you explain a little bit too as to why we even call it a gauge? What is that about and how did that, how did that come about? If I have a 12 gauge and if you took a lead ball the size of the barrel, it's how many of those balls would make up one pound of lead. And in this case, 12 lead balls, the, the diameter of the barrel, would make one pound. So that's why you have 12 gauge. Oh, wow. 20 gauge, you would have smaller balls, so it would be 20 of those lead balls that would make up one pound. That leads us, of course, to slugs. And you've got some interesting things going on with this particular line. Yeah, slugs are, you know, a lot of times used for hunting. And in some states, you have to use slugs. They won't let you use a rifle. Oh. So in that case, you use a shotgun slug where instead of the little BBs, it has one slug in there, an actual bullet, more or less, with a special wad around it. And that wad, again, pushes that slug out and gains a spin from the barrel. You know, they're great for hunting out to 100, out to maybe 200 yards. I mean, they're not a long range round, but they're, they're very useful for, you know, close range deer hunting. We've now got a good grip on the handgun, the rifle round, and of course the shotgun. So we can't thank you enough for letting us come oh, here today to Hornady. For yeah, this has yeah. been amazing, and uh, we look forward to seeing a lot more from Hornady. Thank you. You probably know by now that I love to accessorize, pretty much anything, in fact. And just like so many other aspects of the gun world, ammo too has its own accessories. Now soon after you begin shooting, you'll likely find that you want to shoot more ammo than you can carry. This lockable case is an essential item to have. It's hard-sided and extremely durable. And in addition to ammo, you can put a lot of other valuables in there as well. Now, we've loved all your questions, feedback, and input online, so keep it coming. Check out our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram feeds for more polls and even some behind-the-scenes photos. We'll see you next time on Love at First Shot, sponsored by Smith & Wesson. We've seen how ammo works, but next week we'll take a look at the intricate and fascinating process required to create a bullet. Precision, performance, and, well, downright perfection is imperative for a reliable round. We'll show you how they get there next time on Love at First Shot.